Hi, I'm Edina City Manager Scott Neal and you're watching On The Job, a show where we take you behind the scenes to show you the city employees that keep Edina going and show you some things you can only see on the job. You're joining me today at one of the city's most beloved and most used public parks, Centennial Lakes Park. One of, the, one of the things that's at the center of Centennial Lakes Park is water. So we're going to meet someone from our water resources staff today and learn a little bit more about how the city maintains water, makes water better, moves water throughout the city. So let me introduce you to Jessica Wilson. Jessica, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Scott. Jessica, tell our audience what you do for the city. So I'm the water resources manager, so I work in floodplain management, drainage management, the provision of clean water, and natural resources restoration and protection. And you do that for the entire city, For right? the entire city, okay. with a great team of other people as well. Okay. So we're at Centennial Lakes Park today, um, and we want to take a little bit of a walk here to see how, how water is handled here and, and really hear about it from kind of a professional in that field. Could you do that for us? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Jessica, so I talked about, uh, I mentioned earlier that the water in Centennial Lakes Park is kind of a key element of this park. Where does the water come from that, that we see right here? There's a big drainage area where all this water comes in, and Centennial Lakes is a lake in name only. It's actually a constructed pond that provides some flood benefit and also some clean water benefit. Okay. So the water that comes here is coming from other parts of the community, but it's not a spring-fed lake or anything like that. Right, this was actually a gravel pit. And so after mining wrapped up mid 20th century, okay. it was master planned into this Centennial Lakes Park, which is this lovely mix of park and private development and the central part, which is that water body. Uh -huh. What do we do out here as a city to help keep this water clean or to make it cleaner than when it came into the lakes? So in this old gravel pit, this is a pond that has been lined. So there's a liner under here okay. and the way that this piece of infrastructure works is water comes in, all of those pollutants like trash and sediment and sand and, and sticks and leaves and all those things settle out in the bottom. Okay. And then cleaner water leaves the lake, uh, the pond, I should say. Yeah. Uh, and then after the pond fills up, which will take many decades, then we can come in and collect all of that polluted muck and muck, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> all that stuff okay. um, and dispose of it properly. And then we've got another long useful life for okay. this piece of infrastructure. But while in between that, we can take little boats out and we can play bocce and, and golf and everything else here. Yeah, I think this is really unique um, because not only do we have this piece of infrastructure that provides this clean water benefit, but we've made it an amenity. So you can skate on it in the wintertime, you can boat on it, you can walk around and enjoy the ducks. Yeah. And this is also a fishing in the neighborhood water body. So okay. the Minnesota DNR stacks it with fish. Okay. So what a great place to introduce a kid to fishing. Yeah. Well, I imagine that this is not the only place in town where we're, you're doing this kind of work, right? Right. Do, can we go see another one maybe? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's go. All right, Jessica, we are at the, the beautiful Linmar Basin. Um, I'd like you to, if you would, tell us a little bit about the basin and how, how does it work and what was the project that we've done here a couple of years ago? So we are upstream of Lake Edina right now and this project was meant to protect Lake Edina, to grab some of the pollutants that are in runoff before it makes its way to Lake Edina. Okay. So this basin served that purpose initially. It was already, when we engaged the neighborhood, they call this lovingly Ditch Park. Ditch Park. So water, we know water already collected here, okay. but we thought let's retrofit this basin to make it work harder and provide even more flood risk reduction benefit and clean water benefit. So water collects here from like our storm water drains like in the streets and in parking lots and, and, it, and it, we put all that here and it sits here for a while and then it goes to Lake Adana? Yep, exactly. Okay. And we retrofitted it to make it even deeper so it can fit more water. Okay. And we put in, you can see there's kind of two linear lines here. There's yeah. Those are sand trenches okay. so that we could access some good soils beneath. 
so it's better at infiltrating that water. Okay. So more water goes down into the ground here when previously it would have just made its way down to Lake Edina. Gotcha. So now we can catch it, we can treat it, we can infiltrate more of that water. Can you tell us a little bit about what the stones are? Yeah, so we know that this is a beloved place where people come and they recreate and they walk and they play. And so we want it to provide some stormwater benefit, but also be a beautiful space for people to visit. So the stepping stones are just for fun. Okay. I mean, they're begging to be hopped along yes. by a kid. Uh, and then of course, all the plantings too, to really make it uh, a good sure. pollinator habitat, but also just a really beautiful space to okay. walk along. This is great. I really like it. Jessica, we're in Weber Park now. Weber Park is, is not a new park but we have just completed uh, some major improvements to it, both on the park side and on the stormwater management side. Can you tell us a little bit about at least the storm management side of those projects? Yeah, we knew there was a lot of flood risk in this neighborhood and there was an opportunity with Weber Park to do some flood risk reduction infrastructure here. And so back when this neighborhood was developed in the 40s and 50s, people were raising their hand and saying, there's a flooding problem here. And so the original Weber Pond was built in the 60s uh -huh. and it was this rectangular, very utilitarian piece of infrastructure. So we've come in and we've revamped Weber Pond. We've made it deeper and bigger so that we can hold more of that flood water. Okay. The other really cool thing that we did here was we have a pump station here so we can predictively lower the water level at Weber Pond, send that water downstream earlier and then make more space to hold more flood water. Okay. And then we can also put it into what we call a clean water mode, where it will hold that water there a little bit longer than it otherwise would have. So more of that stuff that gets caught up in, in storm water can settle out. And then we're sending cleaner water after a storm downstream as well. Where, does, where is downstream from here? <laughs> so all the water that leaves Weber Pond goes to Bidet Makaska in okay. Minneapolis. Oh, very so nice. So it went there before the project, it's still going there after the project. And we, as a design objective said, we wanna make sure that there's no increase in flood risk for anybody with this project, including our downstream neighbors. Okay, good. So at the same time we did the, the water improvements over here, behind us here or in the foreground is, is a large park project that uh, also had a lot of improvements to it as well. Yeah, so we rebuilt the baseball fields and what you might not realize unless you're seeing a storm event in progress is that not only is it the pond that's very visible yeah. and the pump station, but there's a series of pipes and a, a swale. So there's a path that leads through the park that you can walk on on any blue sky day like today. But during a storm, that would probably be full of water and pour over those fields so that we can safely get water into the pond. So the, so the improvements that we see, that we've seen already today at Centennial Lakes, at the Linmar Basin and here are good for the ducks, right? But they're also good for the people that live around, live around those improvements. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we know that stormwater management is something that we, we want to provide, um, but we also know that people value these spaces. That's where they play, that's where they visit with their neighbors. So we want to make them beautiful and welcome people into those spaces to recreate as well. So we can layer in those flood risk reduction and clean water benefits, but also have natural resources restoration and some other amenities stacked in as well. It's fantastic. Thank you for what you do here and for the safety that you bring to people that live in and around these bodies of water. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching On The Job, a show where we take you behind the scenes to meet the city employees that keep Edina going and show you some things you can only learn on the job. You've been watching on the job, a show where we show you a show where we. Okay. You've been watching on the job, a show where what? What are you doing? Sorry, I, that, I was not doing you. I was. Oh, all right. I'm focusing. Okay. You've been watching on the job, a show about the city employees that keep Edina going and show you some things you can only learn. Wait, wait. A show, that's not wait, right. Wait, wait, that's not okay. Right.